real power of uh, influence is giving a voice to the one who don't have one. So this is what I found out in the last one decade, being a photographer, traveling across Tamil Nadu, the land of temples, shooting a lot of pictures on temples. So I grew up in this land called Tamil Nadu, where there were only two choices. I knew only two choices, either become an engineer or a doctor. I chose to become an engineer and I always thought I am born to be an engineer. And then I went to US to do my masters, finished it, found a job and I was working there for almost eight years. And this is when the photography bug bit me and I wanted to come back and do photography full time. And uh, what would I do? One of the things that I um, was really fascinated about being in US was the way they promoted everything about uh, that land. Even small things would be packaged so well, a gift shop will be there, there will be a guide to take you around and all that. And then I realized there's nothing like that in our country. So I wanted to come back and do something visually through my photography. So I came back, started documenting a lot of temples. Um, we had almost around 50,000 temples that are 1000 plus years old in Tamil Nadu. So I said this is what I want to do and I started documenting a lot of temples. And uh, every time I went to a new temple, I was fascinated that every inch is being sculpted there with so many stories, so many scenes inscribed there. And we knew very little bit about all those. My parents did not tell me about these stories, about these temples. My school did not teach me about these temples or there are not a lot of information out there. So I started documenting these temples and coming up with books. My first book was on a temple which was just 60 kilometers away from my place but I hardly knew about it till I was almost 30. And I started telling stories about these temples. And during my travels, I also found there are so many stories that are untold across the places, across wherever I went, there are stories that has to be told but they're not told. So me and my team started documenting the stories of heroes who are doing some fascinating work. So the first story that we did was about a guy who was feeding 3,000 parrots on a daily basis who was staying right like two streets down my lane. And this documentary became so popular and, and the world media came to this guy from CNN to BBC to everyone. So that's when I realized the power of the media that I have in and the power of talent that I've been gifted with. So I started telling more stories, stories of a teacher who uses practical examples to teach their, the, the kids in a cooperation school to a guy who is planting literally a forest in Assam. Stories like this all over. And while I was traveling around seeing all these stories, I also saw there are so many traditions and cultures that are untouched and the world doesn't know. Even the people in the same state don't know about these things. As when I was growing up, this is a very, very common scene in Tamil Nadu, right? Every household in the entrance, they would do this kolam or it's called rangoli in the north. Every house had it. It's very, very common. It's generally done using these flour, grain flour, mostly rice flour. And uh, it has a very spiritual, religious and also a design significance. Spiritually, it's like a, like a morning charity that you do for ants and insects um, so that they have their food and they don't come inside the house. And religiously, it's a sign of, you know, welcoming Goddess Lakshmi, a sign of prosperity. And design-wise, it added a lot of aesthetics to your entrance. So I would see this day in and day out while I grew up. And now, I hardly see this. It's become a rarity. I see this very, when I go to villages or, or some places like that. So in the urban spaces, it's almost vanished. And I kept seeing more examples of things that are like disappearing right in front of my eyes. This is an art form that existed for almost more than 2000 years in Tamil Nadu and there are scriptural evidence of this art form. Anyone knows the name of this art form? I'm sure very few will, would have even seen it. That's the beauty about India. It's, it has so many things that we hardly know about you know, each other state or each other region. So this is called Terukutu. Terukutu is basically a drama that is played on streets. Teru means street and Kutu means drama. So a Terukutu artist typically is a one-man show. 
he's basically his own makeup artist he's basically his own tailor he's a singer he's a performer he's a dancer and a therukutu play starts around 8 o'clock in the night and goes up till 5 a.m in the morning again this was a scene that is so prevalent in the smaller towns while i was growing up and with the advent of tv and otts and all that people hardly are interested in this so i we wanted to take these art forms and show to the world in a way the world has not seen it before generally you would see in this in bad lights you know in a sweaty night environment so what if these art forms go in landscapes that you would not imagine of that is what we started doing taking our traditional heritage cultural art forms in landscapes that are very modern and different so this resulted in people using these images talking about these art forms and now they're all over chennai and coimbatore airport what started as a small ordinary photography project is now becoming a conversation starter for people parents talk about these things to their kids and this is one way of creating an influence for these art forms while i was doing this i also came across a lot of handicrafts which needs a lot of attention here's an example this is a mat this is a mat which is called pattamadai pai pattamadai is the name of the place and pai is the mat pai means mat so these mats are made in pattamadai so these are not these ordinary mats that come out of these machines when you put the dried grass it is very very special uh, these are done from a very different mat called korai it's the name of the grass and these grass are cut harvested and brought soaked in water dried and then this person sits and cuts these grass into two when when they cut the grass into two there is a there is some particle inside they clean that so all you're left with is the skin and then they roll the skin so you're left with the thread so with this thread they weave the mat somebody is sitting and weaving the mat the entire day and you would have seen the weaves weaves are generally sitting in chair and then weaving like this but this mat is woven by having the weave underneath them so they are literally sitting on top of the weave and weaving this mats so typical so this is how they are woven this is a typical environment of a uh, where the mats are woven so a weaver gets 75 rupees at the end of the day for weaving this and these mats are brilliant in terms of design in terms of feel very silky very light and also has very good medicinal values it absorbs the body heat and keeps you warm in the winter but the number of people who have been doing this are declining very very fast because people are hardly buying handmade stuff for our ancestors efficiency was you know basically a combination of uh, um, art and aesthetics but now it has become cheap and scaling and quantity right so one of the things we started doing is also to document in from an engineering background we started documenting what they are doing from the smallest of the needle to the biggest of the weave we started documenting what they are doing we started documenting the entire art form so it is not only photos and videos it is also an engineering documentation so the goal is to basically find these art forms this is another example um uh, it's called jamakalam i don't know how many of you have seen this there is a version of this in gujarat and maharashtra but these are coming from an area called bhavani in tamil nadu so these jamakalams are basically carpets which were used to sit down on the floor people have moved out uh, nobody sits on the floors these days so the carpets are basically declining the weavers are the number of weavers are basically declining so what we did we went documented this art form and we are coming out with a book basically talking about this art form and the entire documentation of the art form itself
So, see, when I was growing up, I had my parents tell me bedtime stories. And I do the same thing for my kid now. So the idea of bedtime stories still exists, but the way I'm delivering the stories have changed, right? A candle was used to illuminate the place, give light and all that, but now we are using the candle as a decorative stuff. The old, the fundamental idea still exists, but the way we are using it is very, very different. So the fundamental idea of these all art forms exists still, but the way it has to be used should be modified. And the main reason of my work is to preserve these by documenting all this. So a person like you who is studying all the latest technologies and seeing the world, seeing new things, can come do some design innovation in these art farms. I want to remove the drudgery in going there and sitting there in that village and learning about this art form. What if I can document everything, all the process through videos and photos and put it out there in the open media so that the educational part of that is done. All you have to do is change the things. A student not only sitting in Jaipur can do this, a student sitting in you know, a la, uh, San Francisco, LA, everywhere can intervene and do some amazing stuff with this. And this is what we need to preserve these things. We have to reinvent and rethink how these things are used. A mat cannot be used as a mat alone. It, it should be rethought as an interior thing, as a wall art, as things outside the mat itself. So we are pushing designers, we are pushing students to work on these things and come up with new ideas. What if it's in the, these designs are in the shirt? What if these are made into very expensive bags? Not only this, so many other art forms. This, there is a um, bronze making thing that has been existing for almost 600 years. And there is very little innovation in terms of technology that has happened in this art form. Why? Because the, there is no sense of pride. A son or a daughter of an art, artisan is wanting to go sit in an IT company and earn very, very less compared to their parents, but still they feel better because they are in an AC room and uh, sitting in front of a computer. right? If only there was intervention in terms of machineries, in terms of uh, um, you know, innovations that has reduced the drudgery of these art forms, more and more people will come. It is not only about that, it is also about the sense of pride. We have kind of lost the sense of pride. The, 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 the next generation is losing the sense of pride of these things because it is considered old, it is considered cliche, it is considered out of style. So what if there is an intervention on these things? And for this intervention, intervention to happen, you need the education of that, right? You need the knowledge of that art form. And that is what we are trying to do through our work. So, whenever people come to me and say about these art forms, they talk in a, in a mode of preservation, in a mode of sadness, in a mode of, you know, we have to do something. I, I in fact tell them, no, that is the wrong way to approach it. It is in fact, should be approached in a way that there is something to learn from it. There is a, something to innovate from it. Instead of seeing it as a history and preservation, we have to see in terms of innovation and, and, and scaling up. I don't know how many people go to gyms or exercise. The kettlebell is very popular these days, right? But Indians had a kettlebell almost 3,000 years ago. There is scriptural evidence of this kettlebell. It's called Karlakatai. And the wrestlers use this. And there are almost 2,000 varieties of Karlakatais made in different wood, different designs. And there are different Karlakatais for different parts of your body. It works on different parts of your body differently. So there is a huge amount of knowledge and, and, and treasure trove of information that existed with our ancestors. It is our responsibility to go find, learn, and use that in some way to innovate or 
some way to you know intervene and make it better i always tell you know there's so much to learn from the uh, artisans in terms of design let's assume a design team which is doing the work here right what if they work with an artisan local artisan and and took a de design um experience from that and use this in your designs there's so much that you can do out out of it so we started documenting so many things and here's an example this is a this is called petty this is something that a, a climber a tree climber the the palm tree climber and the coconut tree climber uses to carry a sickle so we got that it it for me it is an art piece it is it is a functional item but it's also an art piece so we got this sent to almost 50 different artists across india and painted what you got so these are a series of mansions like uh, rajasthan and shikavati area these are series of mansions in uh, chennai area which are uh, being uprooted so badly uh, so i made a collection of all the entrances and came up with a book called mogup and uh, as a photographer this is a small way i'm trying to preserve the culture that is disappearing so fast right in front of my eyes so cultural preservation through documentation through science through sharing the knowledge is so much important it is not our not only our uh, you know something that we have to do it is it is each one of our responsibility to take it up and and use in some small way in our work um wherever we can sorry so it's not a choice it's a responsibility so i i urge every one of you to go back to our roots and do something about it pick up some small thing and use it in your work we can do some amazing thing for our artisans and we can save those things so thank you so much for your time